Now the idea about the exhibition was to use this archive because these ideas were very inventive for contemporary artists and architects to, to make new projects based on the ideas found in the archive. So how you can reuse not only actual materials but also information and historical material to make new projects. So like in these screens you see a series of projects that are creative documentations that are new projects based on the archival material of the old project. And each one there's, um, it refers to a number. So that, let's say this one, it refers to, to, my, to experiment number 88 from the archive and it uses the technique that, that that experiment in the archive explains to make a new project with contemporary materials and uh, digital media and new techniques somehow. And some of them are also animations. Um, so that's an animation, a creative documentation of the project. And I guess we'll see a few more. So were these done specifically for this exhibition? Mm -hmm. And by who? Different people. There, there are different people that I studied with, mm -hmm. um, that I appreciate, uh, that I think they're really good designers and architects, um, um, students of mine, colleagues of mine, friends that, um, that wanted to participate in this exhibition. And the idea online is that all of the archival material is um, is reused for new projects. So mm -hmm. other people that are interested in doing new projects or expand the archival database are welcome to do that online. Um, you can go there and click on it and um, you'll find all the information. So hopefully the project can grow. And online there are also links from the archive to different, um, to like online links to other blogs and websites. Um, so I hopefully, uh, hopefully this will become like a resource for information and I think it's very important to revisit that period because most of sustainability um, during the past two decades has been very technically oriented. Well, these ideas are very um, inventive and um, fun, <laughs> if I can say that. And um, they're, they're also very much in tune with social and political uh, conditions of the time and uh, ingrained in a cultural references, so um, it's not just a kind of technique that you put photovoltaic sails and apply to lead standards, and this is what this archive kind of brings uh, brings out as a, as a reference. People go through it and they, and they think uh, it's very different from what sustainability is today. And, um, and these are some of the projects that have been done. I hope there are more. I hope that people can continue contributing, con continue to, contributing to that online and, and it grows more and more and it becomes a resource, that, that, like a pedagogical resource that's useful. Mm -hmm. um, that was this, the aspiration. This is funny. This one, this, this animation of a project that um, a friend of mine from MIT did. Uh, we did that together, but he did the animation where um, it's called Provolutions for an Underwater City. Um, that um, there are these spaces underwater that corals and micro microza from the sea kind of aggregate around them in time. And when this thing kind of grows biologically, um, you can have a diver go knock on the shell and inhabit it and make it a mile. They're very utopic, some of them. But, but this kind of tissue engineering has played out so much during the last 20 years that um, it's, uh, here's a diver. Very funny. <laughs> I really this is my favorite part. It was a fictional narrative in the 60s, almost close to science fiction, but now with tissue engineering and, and all the evolution of uh, biomedical research that's going on, it, it really is something that's not far out from, from reality. Like the, the boundary between science fiction and reality is is very, very thin, um, checking out the, the utopia of these experiments. So that's how the island forms. That was a crazy researcher from Germany, Rudolf Dornack, that nobody, nobody really knows about. And 
the other thing is that I try to include in the archive uh, a lot of unknown figures, uh -huh. um, like Rudolf Dornack, which is the architect that did this experiment, is not a well-known architect from the 60s working on ecology and biology. Um, he's not like Buckminster Fuller and, and John McHale or Ian McCarr, which are the major figures, but this work was so expansive at that time, and I tried to collect the, the most um, kind of obscure pieces of information that were very inventive, but not drawn very well or presented very well. And one of the tasks was to kind of visualize these ideas somehow with creative documentations.